Hello everyone and welcome into this Tuesday edition of the Five Star News. I'm Kayla Cumby, and sadly this will be our last show of the semester for our cohort A crew and students. We want to bring you the best show of the semester. So let's start you off with What's Up Heritage. What is up generals? I'm Tyler Ingram and this is What's Up Heritage. It's good to be here this Tuesday morning. To get you started off, HHS Band will be having a concert here tonight at the theater from 7 to 8 p.m. Tickets are only available to band members' families. Now for all you Cohort B students, hat slash pajama day it will be on Thursday and ugly Christmas sweater day it will be on Friday. On Thursday night, the choir will be having their holiday concert in the theater from 7 to 8 p.m. Choir members' families are the only one that's getting tickets. That's it for announcements. Now here's Matson for your weather through Friday. I'm Matson Hogue and this is your weather forecast up until Friday. Today there is a high of 48, a low of 25 with a 10% chance of rain. Tomorrow on Wednesday there will be a high of 60, a low of 31 with a 10% chance of rain. Thursday there will be a high of 64, a low of 35 with a 10% chance of rain. And on Friday there will be a high of 63, a low of 49 and a 10% chance of rain. Thanks Tyler and Matson. Y'all have delivered the announcements and weather flawlessly this semester. We appreciate you guys. Moving on, and we have a slight change from the county in how they will be handling quarantines from now on. It sure has been a crazy year to say the least with COVID, but we do have the latest news. Here is Brooklyn Collins and Gracie Dawson with this report. There have been some changes to our protocols regarding quarantines. Uh, based on the Center for Disease Control and their recommendations. So quarantines have changed from 14 days to 10 days, and that's for people who come in close contact with someone who has tested positive for COVID. Also, uh, there's a way for you to come back within seven days if you uh, come in close contact and are quarantined, and then you wait five days and take a test and test negative. Then you could come back within seven days. It's a little tricky, uh, because you can't use the quick test. You have to use the one that has to be sent off, um, and usually it takes a few days to get that back. Um, but it is possible to come back within seven days. If uh, you come in close contact, wait five days, get tested, get the results back, and they're negative, then you could return within seven days. Uh, so I got quarantined this last week, but because of the new CDC guidelines, I ended up coming back since I... Uh, didn't have any symptoms or didn't get tested or anything. I came back in 13 days instead of 14, but uh, usually it's seven to 10. Thanks for that information, you two. Moving on now, and we have our annual Christmas concert tonight in the theater by our very own Legion of Generals. It sure will be different due to COVID regulations, but we do have a preview for you here on this show. Here's Dan Anderson, Aaron Brewer, and Colton Buckles with this report. Hello, Generals. I'd like to welcome everybody to our virtual live streamed Christmas concert tomorrow night at 7 p.m. We'll be streaming live on the Five Star News Network, and um, the concert will feature the, the full band playing Nightmare Before Christmas, Sleigh Ride, The Grinch, and Amazing Grace. Then we'll have a small break and we'll separate out. The jazz band will perform, and uh, I can't even tell you what all they're performing. Um, Funky Old St. Nick, uh, Here Comes Santa Claus, Green Sleeves, Trombones Under the Tree. It'll be a good time. I wish we could invite you all live. We'd love to have you live. We can't have you live because of COVID restrictions. We will have a reduced audience uh, of band members, parents, or family only. Um, but we'd love to see you join us on the live stream on the Five Star News YouTube channel. Thank you, guys. Merry Christmas. Looks like a great time. I sure can't wait to watch the Legion of Generals perform tonight. But it's time for a break here on this show. But don't go away because Zach and Dylan will join us for sports. And we'll have a recap of both the girls and boys basketball game over the weekend. And we will recognize some very special ladies that were named All-State in softball. Stay tuned. Sports is next. <laughs> Welcome in, Generals. Zach Brown here and Dylan Braun. We're here to get you all exciting sports news. We're going to start you off with our boys' basketball team. They faced Ridgeland last Tuesday and got their first win of the year. 
and went into the weekend looking to get to 500 as they played Southeast and LFO. Yep, they're going to Pickens tonight to play Pickens County. How will that turn out? We'll send you straight to the highlights. We played Southeast this past week, and we also played LFO or rival, Crestown Rivals. Um, I feel like we played pretty good. I mean, we just got to work on some stuff, and we'll figure it out. But we got uh, Pickens tomorrow at Pickens, and it's a big region game, so it should be a good game. Have a few good days of practice, or well, a good day of practice, and then uh, go up there tomorrow and hopefully get out there and win. This weekend had a couple of basketball games, went down to Southeast for a region game on Friday. A little bit of sloppy uh, game, but we were able to pull that out. Ended up winning by 18 or 19 in the end. So um, you know, kind of a crazy, crazy game, but we finally got it going. And then uh, Saturday went over to LFO and just never could get it going. The uh, ball wasn't going in the hole. We were missing layups, missing uh, three-pointers. Uh, just had trouble with them. It was close at halftime, and in that third quarter, they kind of opened it up on us. Um, uh, we had trouble guarding them the second half a little bit, so they ended up beating us by about 20. But we get another shot at LFO on Saturday, so looking forward to that. Uh, tonight, we're going to head to Pickens, though. we got another region game up there. Uh, they're a very vet veteran team, a lot of seniors. Um, we played them last year in the region tournament, so we played them three times last year, so we know a lot about them. So it should be a good game, and hopefully we can get another region win. Good luck down at Pickens tonight, guys. That's for the girls. They were looking to get their second and third wins of the season against Southeast and LFO. Could they get two in a row? Here's Five Star Sports reporters Matthew Fowler and Kane Stover with the recap and the preview of tonight's game versus the Dragons. Um, so, yeah, so big weekend for us this past weekend. Um, got a big region win against Southeast on Friday night away. It was our first road game. And then the next day after we got that win, um, went to LFO, which was going to be a, a difficult task for us because of the Collins girls so good. and We knew we had to focus on uh, game planning for her and, and, and figuring out who was going to help her try to pull off the win and thought our girls did a really good job of, of uh, team defense on her and holding her to 12 points, which was a, a task in itself. But um, another road victory, which is always good to win on the road, but um, especially against a rival team. Um, thought the girls played with a ton of energy, a ton of enthusiasm, played together, uh, connect, real, real connected defensively. Uh, and managed to have balanced scoring yet again. So it's been our hallmark so far this year is sharing the basketball and, and getting things done that way and um, by, by committee, which is going to be important for us moving forward. And, of course, um, you know, the game against Pickens next coming up, um, another difficult road test, and they're extremely good. Uh, they, they like to push the tempo a little bit, press full court. Um, so we're going to take care of the ball, not turn it over. And uh, I think offensively they take a lot of threes and, and try to speed the game up. So we'll have to slow it down a little bit and see if we can't uh, get them to play at our speed and, and dictate the tempo. So I think we have a really good chance if we continue to play defense the way we're capable of playing. Good luck, ladies. And now on to softball. The three-time state champion softball team is reeling in more awards now. The softballers were recognized by the county superintendent this past weekend, and now more all-state awards keep coming in. Yep. One of those being the coveted Pitcher of the Year award. Tyler Ingram and Matson Hogue have more on the story. You know, we had an unbelievable showing in the All-State uh, voting last last week. We had we had six girls that were represented, five on the first team and one on the second team. Uh, you know, Rachel w was voted Pitcher of the Year uh, for 4A, which was an unbelievable uh, accomplishment for her. That's three years in a row for her. And, uh, you know, our other girls, Carmen Gaylor, was voted for first team uh, infield. Uh, Madeline Stone was voted first team catcher. Riley Kokendo was voted uh, first team outfield. Uh, Bailey Crystal was voted first team infield. Um, and uh, Zoe Wright was voted for uh, second team infield. So, you know, unbelievable accomplishments for, for all these girls. And, uh, you know, I'm really, really proud of them. I'm proud of everything they stand for with our program. And, uh, you know, some of them are going to be going off to college and some will be uh, you know, rising as a senior or, or a junior. So, you know, I'm really proud of them and I'm proud of uh, everybody. You know, it, it's not just an individual award. Uh, it's kind of a team that, that kind of puts it all together. So, uh, you know, very, very blessed to have them. So I'm so honored and blessed to have received this award. Um, I couldn't have done it without my teammates and all my coaches in the past, um, my parents, um, have, for helping me in this sport get to where I am today. Um, I couldn't have done it without um, Kelsey Anderson. She's a freshman pitcher, and she helped a lot with me this season pitching, and um, she deserves some credit too. So 
Um, getting All-State is a big honor for everybody, and it just shows how much we work as teams, um, or as a team, and it also shows some individual awards, and it just shows how much we work. And now some breaking sports news. Coach Tanner Moore has resigned as the head coach of the Heritage softball team. And this came as a surprise to many of the students here in Heritage. Yep. Taking over next season will be Coach Megan Crawford. How's, how's the team feel and how's it turn out? We'll give you more on the story. You know, obviously I'll be, I'll be stepping away uh, from the Heritage family as a, as a teacher and coach. Uh, I got an opportunity in financial services that's going to, you know, allow me to use my strengths and uh, my skill set uh, to coach and to educate. But it's just not going to be uh, students in the math classroom. It's not going to be softball players. Uh, it'll be families and helping them with their financial solutions. So um, it's something that is, is best for me and my family, for my daughter. Uh, it's something that I'm going to be able to provide uh, more flexibility for her financially and, and also time-wise for her to, to be able to spend with her. So something I'm very excited about. And, uh, you know, our, our program is in great hands with, with Coach Crawford. Uh, you know, I'm so proud of her and so happy for her to, to be promoted to head coach. And uh, she's going to do an amazing job. And it's going to be awesome to, to watch this team from a different vantage point as a fan and not a coach. So, uh, you know, I'll be around. I'll be a fan uh, and a supporter of Heritage and the community. And, and I want to thank you all. Uh, thank you students. Thank the faculty and administration and the community for, for everything you've given me and, and you've provided and supported me. So, uh, you know, I appreciate it and I'll be around. Uh, first of all, we just want to thank Coach Moore for his four years that he's been here with us in the program. I can't thank him enough for being a great mentor uh, to me in the softball world. I learned a lot from him. He knows the game better than anybody, and I'm just grateful that I was able to learn under him and kind of take what I've learned from him and implement it into uh, my new role as a head coach. Um, as far as stepping into the head, co head coach role, I'm really excited and grateful for the opportunity that Mr. Bradford and Dr. Shexander have given me. Yeah, we, regarding uh, our new, new softball hire, we're, we're very, very excited about Coach uh, Megan Crawford uh, taking over as our head coach. Uh, as m most, most of you guys know, Coach Crawford's been with us for four years now, um, has uh, you know, been on all our uh, been, been on our staff last four years, and and her between her playing background and uh, you know her, her coaching experience, she's exactly what uh, what we we wanted our next head coach. So from that standpoint, it made it an easy uh, decision and transition. And uh, I'm really excited about you know the things she's wanting to do and implement with our girls. And uh, there's no question she's she's gonna. Um, Continue to lead us, you know, both success on the field, like like we've experienced, but also, um, you know, have uh, build strong relationships with our young ladies and, and continue to uh, influence them and help them improve uh, in all aspects of their lives as well. So, um, you know, we have a lot of girls returning next year, and I'm excited to see what they're going to be able to do. They've had a lot of experience the last year, two years, three years, and. Um, you know, they'll be able to step in day one and know exactly what's going on. They've been there. They've seen it. And so, um, you know, we're just I'm just excited for the opportunity to, to step in. On day one, we'll be ready to go. And um, It's really going to be different without Coach Moore. He coached all my years at Heritage and won our team at three state championships, and I'm really going to miss him. But I'm excited to see what Coach MC does with our program and the new girls coming up. And obviously, we're very, we're, I'm, you know, we're happy for Coach Moore. He's he's uh, moving on a different career, and um, so we wish him well. We're excited for him, and uh, we're thankful for all he's done for Heritage Softball. Thanks, Dylan and Zach. Moving right back into the news now with one last story. And if you couldn't tell by walking around the hallways, it has been a fun week for Heritage students to dress up. Both Cohort A and Cohort B students have certain days assigned for them to dress up. Here is Zach Brown and Dylan Bryan with this report. All right, folks, for many of you, this is the last week of school for the semester, and uh, we just wanted to celebrate that a little bit and dress down. Um, so today we've got uh, hat and pajama day, and tomorrow will be ugly holiday sweater day. That ugly holiday sweater day goes back to our first year at Heritage, um, our first valedictorian. Um, mentioned that and we started doing it he got it going and that was back when you couldn't buy those sweaters at Walmart you had to go to grandma's closet or something and find one uh, so back then we were all wearing sweaters that were way too small for us 
Um, so now I know it's uh, kind of a tradition all over the place to wear a tacky holiday sweater day. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll be doing that on Tuesday for cohort A and Thursday for cohort B. For tacky sweater day, I have a real ugly Christmas sweater. It's, it's got stripes going this way and this way, and it's blue, red, and green. I don't have it on right now, but I'm going to put it on a little bit later in the day. And uh, yeah, I love this day. It's cool to see all the different uh, sweaters that everyone else is wearing. It sure has been fun dressing up these past few days as a Cohort A student. But Cohort B, now it's time for you to dress up. And that will wrap up today's show. But we will join you Friday with a brand new report from our Cohort B crew. But until then, we want to wish you a happy holidays and stay classy, Heritage.